News First News Line with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a very good evening to you and a warm welcome to Newsline. Uh, we are, as always, uh, broadcasting from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. And today is a recording and um, my guest is an iconic uh, figure in the world of politics from the Republic of Sri Lanka. He is, uh, he's got a string of achievements which I don't think I can, uh, you know, probably take me more than half an hour to list it all. But uh, suffice to say, he's been the former uh, Secretary General or the General Secretary of the Communist Party of Sri Lanka, which he, uh, which position he gave up rather recently, and um, also um, he's um, been a cabinet minister and, uh, and a long and checkered history. But importantly, he's the man who probably is responsible for making sure that COPE, COPE, is actually a almost a household word in Sri Lanka's uh, uh, families and uh, through their television stations uh, and their television boxes and uh, we are of course talking about none other than that very iconic uh, politician the former chairman of the committee on public enterprises cope and that's very much in the news tonight and here he is with us uh, uh, Mr. Dew Gunasekra, very good evening to you, sir. Good evening, Faros. <laughs> it's lovely to see you. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but your retirement has not really gone well, has it? Because there's still more problems, and, and people like us uh, and everyone else uh, are seeking your opinion and so on. Probably no, I'm not, I'm not retired from politics. Oh, you'll never. No. Once a politician, always a politician? Always, until the th <laughs> I will ah. <laughs> It is only death that comes in between. Um, would the, is that the same with uh, your colleague, uh, you know his name, Mahinder Rajapaksa, President Mahinder? Yeah. Is he, do you think he will ever retire? Uh, I don't know. It's up to him to decide. <laughs> but he might do the same as you. He might say, no, I don't retire from politics. So. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't intend to retire. Now then, I want to ask you this. As you know, in the early hours of this morning, uh, the president, uh, Gotabi Rajapaksa, he dissolved parliament. I mean, he uh, prorogued parliament. My goodness me. Delete that word, dissolved. Prorogued parliament. And uh, tell me, uh, Mr. Gunasekra, uh, what is the effect of proroguing Parliament? After all, it was, they were due to reconvene on the 11th of January anyway, and now it's been extended to the 18th. Is that what you use proroguing no, for? No, it, it will have no effect at all, hmm. as far as the people are concerned. Right. <laughs> because it's a festive season. Hmm. Most of the MPs are going back to their homes, country. And some people might take the opportunity to go abroad and normally and, and visit their assets abroad. <laughs> and uh, but uh, but in my in my view, uh, something more than that. I feel that president is trying to um, take in the present situation into account, mm. uh, trying to make an assessment, reassessment of the situation, mm. and probably make some certain. Uh, important decisions, probably. Uh, what do you What do you mean in in normal English? What does that no, mean? I did not. I so for instance, I put it this way. Yeah. If I were the president. Yeah. If I were confronted with this present situation, same problem with the same problem, I would also prog and take time off. I'll make a face of the cabinet. But, you, some but, of the but, but why would you want to prorogue parliament to? To reshuffle the cabinet, no, you can no, do no. that if you want to. No, it's a, it's a, no, no you will have to roll the cabinet, reshuffle in the cabinet. Our other rearrangement of the priorities, probably. I put you have to have a consultation with your, you know, other top officials mm. and the cabinet colleagues, and see they're making the reassessment of the whole situation. Because only three years more to go for him, so. But yeah. uh, if I put it to you uh, that, you know, the people out there, our, our viewers, the Republic, um, it is not always fair to say that they will not be impacted because important work that is being carried out by committees such as what you were the chairman, the Committee on Public Enterprise, SCOPE, important work that they've done and not been presented to Parliament will have to be 
will have to be binned and restarted but the again. Tradition, the tradition of the parliament had been, in, even in the case of uh, progged parliament, uh, those uh, committees, of course, they stand dissolved, mm. but uh, they are, will be reappointed. But uh, they had never been, I think, if, as far as I could remember, they were reappointed, including the chairman. Right. Unless, of course, I, you know, president or the prime minister or the decide that. Were you yeah. reappointed? Yes, yes. Okay. But you had to, but you had to restart the whole bond process. Uh, no, no process. That's no question. Only thing is the reshuffling of the members. Sometimes uh, new members might come. And so, what probably. happened? Did you finally but, uh, present? No that progress. Progress will have no effect at all. You continue the, the process. Only Parliament does not sit, that's all. But what happened to when you got... But, uh, but President of the Prime Minister and the governing party get the opportunity if necessary. If necessary, if they can think necessary that, say, this cop chairman is no good, we'll put another man. Of course, this is the op best opportunity. <laughs> ah, I see. So there you are. Those are the little golden nuggets yeah. that become apparent. But yeah. when, you, when you were reappointed as the chairman cop, what happened to the report that you were unable to table to Parliament because they did not No, that parliament? was again in the case of a dissolution. Ah, not this is the case of a proroguing. In that case, uh, what happened was the Parliament uh, in session and the process speaker was asking for an interim report while the investigation is going on. Mm. Uh, then I was asked, then I uh, prepared an interim report. And that particular, I was working till about 7 p.m. in the night. Mm. And uh, having pr finalized the report, I was collecting signatures. And there was all over tie tie. Whether there were some people to more to come. Then uh, we were having a discussion. Then I got a message from the government press. <laughs> they're going to, the dissolve. order has come from the president to dissolve parliament. And what did you then do? Then I telephoned speaker and the speaker didn't know. He mm. said, until I told him, he was not aware. Right. Right. So, because I had, in the order paper, I had placed that as one of the items to be dis di uh, discussed, uh, discussed for the following morning. Mm. So, uh, I lost the opportunity, that is the end of it. So, from the story that you are telling me, it appears that even the speaker didn't know about this. Yeah. And so, it appears that... That is a dissolution, not wrong. <laughs> okay. And that was even far worse, <laughs> a, a greater implication. Yeah. Um, but doesn't that go to show that parliament is al almost nothing other than a rubber stamp of the executive president? You can, in <laughs> you can interpret it that well, way. Well, I mean, the speaker doesn't know anything about it, really? like you're telling me. Yeah, yeah. I have no doubt, I have little reason to disbelieve you. Yeah. Right? So it, then, you know, uh, so it is like a rubber stamp. No, that is a real reason because they want the, the government. Uh, I know what has really happened. Yeah. Uh, they wanted, they didn't want my report to be tabled on the following morning. That is the real reason. That is reason. the real reason. Yeah. So they went to the extent of not proroguing. Dissolving it. Dissolving. And they would easily proroguing. That's much more extreme than they're, proroguing. They are proroguing. I, I got I got the information from the within the governing party at that time. Oh. Oh, <laughs> but in the ten o'clock in the night, I got a telephone call. My God, can I, you tell me who called you? No, no, you? I, 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 I don't no, know. That's too, that's too fair sensitive. Not bad, not right? fair. And he said, is, is, is that person still alive? Oh yes, he not being white well. banned anyway. No, 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 he's there. He's an honest man, upright man. <laughs> Has he been to jail? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm trying on behalf of the Republic. I'm trying to give you the name. I'm trying, honestly. Now he told me. Yeah. Two members of the uh, the committee. Yeah. So it was a man, when, not a woman. When, when, when before he's their leader. Yeah. And prevailed on them. She says, if news report come, we all want to be, we face elections. We must do something. Then came the order. The dissolution of parliament. That's, That's it's as simple like is that. But what what can you? I know you are not in government now. But what can you speculate as to the reason of proroguing parliament? No, probably the only reason I can possibly probably you can prorogue when you prorogue what happened was parliament's stand still speaker can't do anything right speaker mm. continues to be speaker yeah but he can't summon parliament 
Only the president has the power to summon parliament now. Once ah. thrown, speaker can't summon parliament, re-summon parliament. Mm -hmm. Only the speaker, on the, only the president. So the MPs need not come to Colombo. So he got an uh, opportunity. Sometimes this has been happening traditionally sometimes. I uh, say about three weeks time to discuss the whole thing. And there's a cooler atmosphere and say we, where we have gone wrong and try to bring some, if we have a necessary minor reshuffle of the cabinet or yeah. major reshuffle. But next, next three years, this is a very critical and crucial time as far as I could see from the point of view of the president. Yeah. Right. That is why I said if I were the president facing the same problem, host of problems, and just particularly at this moment, I would do the same and I do these are. I will get rid of some of the undesirables from the cabinet, if I were. Have you, have you heard any information that leads you to believe that we in Sri Lanka might end up with a different prime minister, for example? Not immediately, I don't think. Hmm. That will worsen the situation. But the cabinet may well get reshuffled. Hmm. I, I think, I don't know. Hmm. I feel that there's a, there's a need for it. But don't you feel for all these reports, uh, Mr. Dew, about uh, the COPE reports that uh, they've been working on, the Sri Lankan Airlines one, the BOI one, the LOLC Hingurana, uh, the, that no, interest these rate are, matter? These are not something new. Air Lanka, they said this is happening so many, over and over. It's a white elephant. What, would you, what do you think we should do with the national airline? National airline, I don't know. There's a problem of, it's a highly capital intensive industry. So you don't, the government doesn't have money. Mm. So I, I, I now feel that, you know, that our decision to take it back from the private sector mm. is not a, a sound decision. Now I feel. I am I'm normally for man for for a public sector. Yeah. But you know, capital intends to uh, airline. I mean, natural I mean, for, to be uh, not to express your patriotism. We must have your national career and all that good. Yeah. But if you don't have the capital, what to do? Yes. Beggars can't be choosers. Because there, there are other national priorities are there. Yeah. So where and Emirates they are doing some good work and we are getting share of the profits. Yeah. But don't you think that there is no real commitment on the part of uh, uh, any government, really, yeah. to to bring about, um, you know, take the the stick and say you need to deliver, otherwise, you know, we're not going to point you. That, that. is the problem, as far as the public cooperation sector is concerned. Yeah. All. Well, why why is this uh, such a uh, isn't such a big problem, but it is a problem. No, not only the public, no, not only the uh, cooperation sector. Yeah. Now it becomes the public service sector. Right. Public service as such. I, I think it's on the decline. It's on the decline. The, the standards, you mean? Standards are declined. Yeah. See, the, but isn't that? I mean, I mean, <laughs> no doubt. Still, you find go some good secretaries. Yeah. I mean, we had some standing secretaries in the ministries Indeed. earlier. Indeed. Uh, you take this, uh, for instance, the Minister of Foreign, uh, Minister of Finance. The Secretary of the Minister of Finance is really otherwise known as Secretary of the Treasury. And he is the custodian of our Treasury. Yeah. And he must be above board. Mm. And see, I mean, SF Amara Singh, uh, Shirley Amara Singh, uh, Baku Mahadev. Uh, uh, Ma, the Bala Singham, Ch Chandi Chamugam, Is Javadana, people, uh, sterling, people. people with sterling qualities. Absolutely top Absolutely. people. Top people. So, uh, you know Sri Lanka? And that is the fact, I mean, that is more, the number of our, our government leaders don't uh, give sufficient thought to it. Can I, can I ask you? Most powerful public servant in the country, not the secretary of the president, but the secretary of the minister of finance. Just in case you're wondering who that is, it, the uh, secretary of the president is now Dr. P. V. Jayasundra. Uh, 
before we go to a break, can I just pose this question to you? You know this one country, one law? Yeah? I put it to you that a better title would be one country, several flaws. In our country, you can't have one law, one. But there are some personal laws. On that note, we'll go for a quick break. Have a little peek at this evening's headlines, which is bound to be interesting, and uh, we'll see you on the other side of the break, shall we? News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And welcome back to Newsline, and it's a recording this evening. I'm in conversation with that iconic uh, politician who was the former chairman of COP, the Committee on uh, Public Expenditure. Uh, uh, exp uh, enterprise, sorry. And um, uh, there, there you go. Now, the, the Mr. Dio Gunasekra, former chairman, Cope. Cope's become a uh, sort of a very famous household name now, um, uh, rather like Muhammad Ali was to the world, you know, <laughs> Cope is to Sri Lanka. Now that, uh, or Kumar Sangakara or anyone like that, you know. Now that, Mr. Dio, you said we were talking about one country, I said, instead of one law, several flaws. It's flawed. But you say that you, we can't have one country, one law. You can have one constitution. Right. But you know, some, we have some personal laws. Traditionally, culturally, I and mean, that's part of our heritage. Right. Right. And very, those are very sensitive. So for instance, Muslim people have their own you know, no, Muslim laws, marriages and other things. Yes. Then the Tesa Valmi is yeah. of course related to the property, no doubt. Mm. That is fast, of course, on the decline. Yeah. And no one was, no one is now uh, so gradually it will disappear. Yeah. Then the Candian law, it also disappear. Mm. As, I mean, the intermarriages are already taking place so fast. You need not bring a law and superimpose on from people will come to that position collectively at the proper time, and with the development of. Uh, and that needs to evolve. Yeah, evolve. It should be evolved. Right. And we now we have enough problems. We want to create problems and bring it again. But uh, that's right, creating problems because that's why I say several flaws. It appears to be flaws. We created enough problems, say, from 1983. Yes. See, see, 26 years. Yeah. Huh? Uh, but we just had Azad Sali released by uh, by a court, by a court, um, saying that these charges were. Uh, you know that he was found not guilty of all no. the charges so doesn't that indicate to you I mean this is one case and there are other cases as well but doesn't that indicate to you two things on the one side that the there are there is still some independence of the judiciary left but the other side the flip side of that is that uh, for this matter to have come up before the courts anyway uh, shows an appalling lack of honesty on the part of the police and the Attorney General's department. Yeah. The, at, I mean, there are three levels. One is the complainant. Yeah. For whatever reason, man may come and make a complaint. But it's not if you're right. if not if you're going to waste the police time. Right. The, when the, the police is there, I mean, they are public servants. They must dispassionately come to a certain conclusions. Hmm. And. Failing which, if they deliberately come in, then the Attorney General's Department is there. Mm. Now, the Attorney General's Department is like the Supreme Court on par with them. I mean, yeah. so they will have to squeeze. So and that, that's the so, part that is difficult to understand, uh, Mr. Duke, because, you know, we have... Uh, again, it's part of the quality of the public service. Indeed, but we have an inherent um, trust, an implicit trust in the people now these things the I, I feel these, these things do happen in other spheres but when it comes to a question of the religion and the nationality and various other things come and it's a very, very take a very serious turn that indeed. is what happened indeed that but, happened. you know we, we so that is why uh, they must be extremely careful yeah as far as then uh, they, when these such sensitive questions comes right unless i mean so that's a sup luckily, I have a Supreme Court, of course, took a decision and dispassionately, they, they, that's the end of it. The, the, people, the, uh, the people have implicit faith in those who man uh, the offices at the Attorney General's Department. 
So imagine the shock uh, and the feeling of letdown when uh, they get it wrong. Now, far as you know, there's a general view. One of the biggest problems in you know, our political culture, mm. now the separate question that we will one day will have discussed, yeah. is, is it on the decline completely. The standards. That is, political culture, that is one of the contributory factors to the present situations. Right. What, what the political, political culture, culture? Decline in the political culture. Right. Right. Well, then the another the one is the politicization of the public service. Mm. Right. That is another one. That is also influencing the political culture. That is also. So here this question comes under that politicization. If the internal department comes under pol subject to politicization, of course that will be the result. Now, Mr. Dew, back uh, many, many questions have come through. Uh, uh, tell me this: when you prorogue Parliament, the, all the work of COPE has to restart after thereafter. No, no, there's no restarting. We will just summon them and then again start from where they stopped. There's no problem at all. But some of the composition might be different. Uh, maybe I, that's all depends if the government and the. Because the co normally the members of the co-op decided upon by jointly by the opposition and the government mm. membership. Opposition send their member, they decide upon the number and they decide. So if they decide to continue with that, of course, if they are going to change, uh, of course, then they, that might. But if the chairman is there, then of course there won't be a problem, I think. So do, you, he do, do you start from where you left off? Yeah, you start from. Oh, okay. You don't have to go back? No, no, no. You can start from there. From where you no, left it's not. It's just not dissolution. Right. It's a prorogue. Even if it is all, the new cop has the right power to start from where, wherever you want. There's right. no question about it. What do you think that, uh, what do you read in the president's visit? Uh, he's gone off on a private visit to Singapore. It might be health, it might be whatever. It's a private visit. That far away says private means private. No? Yes, right. No, no, no. I, I don't mean that. I, but what I'm saying is yeah. uh, the, that may well be true. You know, private is private and all that business. But when you are in the public eye, uh, whether you like it or not, you your privacy yeah, is yeah, also correct. subject to public scrutiny. Yeah, That's, That's the way it is. Yeah, no. And we have no other laws in our country on privacy. Yeah, yeah. I can remember now when Maitipal says that he went to Singapore, the yes. same question came up. Exactly. When Ranil Rikramasin goes there again, it came yeah. up. And, and, uh, and when, yes, but when Ranil went to, to, to Singapore during the height of the bond scam, <laughs> we all wanted to know whether he had met one Arjuna Mahindran. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so that that's there, but you know there is speculation here. Do you think that it is time that uh, either by executive order or by negotiation that uh, Mahinda Rajapaksa will step down as being the prime minister? Step down from prime? That he uh, sorry that he will, you know that he will retire from that position. I don't think. No, I don't think. So that speculation can you believe? Uh, I don't that? think. Even we'll wait till the end of the term. He might stay back. Stay. I don't think. A bit like what Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Bandranaika. Because no, she was prime minister with, at a very ripe old age. No. I mean the unity of the government, unity of the rank and file of the parliamentary group, and all these are factors that will have. They take precedence of all other issues. So unless, uh, and if he's not, he's not incapacitated to work, uh, then there's another problem. <laughs> this is not, I'm being cynical now, but this is not No, so no, I don't think. Okay. okay. I don't think. Hmm. I know in the real, the ground situation and, uh, you know, the how things are taking place. In my view, I, he, will, he, will, he will stay till the end of the term. Do you detect, um, do you detect? that there is a lack of um, vision or a lack of uh, wanting to be successful by most of these politicians in the ruling SLPP party because they seem to be quite, oh well you know if you're the, you're the, he's the president, he's the leader, he's the prime minister and they, uh, where is there, you think there's a lack of personal agenda or the people's agenda 
Uh, for all here, this that applies to the opposition as well. Of course, that could be that does up. We applied the same yardstick in, in pre previous government. Mm -hmm. Eternally, from the day one, yeah, there are conflicts between the two. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you think Sri yeah. Lanka can ever have a national government, a real, proper, successful national government? I don't see. It. Isn't that? The, Why is that? I. I feel now I'm I'm a little worried that there's uh, a national leadership crisis is brewing in the country. How come Rani Vikram Singh is no, no, creeping no. into the conversation? When I say a national leadership crisis means overall politically. Yeah. There's no leadership in the UNP. There's no proper leadership. National leadership is still in the process of being even SJB. Mm -hmm. Boom, yeah. Now the president, uh, mm. the new president came. Uh, so now people are talking about where I went. Now, in my way, I, I, what I look at it was why, why he, he was uh, not in a position to report that he, although he came from a political family, he was not a, never a politician. In this country, uh, where we have experienced, you know, the pol party system and democratic process from 1948 onwards, the head of the department or head of the government should be always with the, with the people. Mm. The people. So that is, uh, I, think he must, I think he is beginning to realize, I think. I, I can remember once, being COVID, the second wave came, mm. there was a discussion on party, I was also invited, that all the ministers are there. And I told the president, the president, I think the COVID, of course, you may be able to control it, bring it to control. My fear is not that COVID, there's a economic crisis is brewing. And you must keep the people informed of the gravity of the crisis we are going to face. And also, I advise him, and the prime minister, all are there, all the ministers are there. Yeah. Right? Get the MPs, governing party MPs, for a workshop and explain to them the gravity of the economic crisis that we are facing. They know nothing about it. On that and note, if you feed, then only they will go back to the country and fill the people. Today, I told him 69, that at least 50% will stand by you if you keep the people informed as what is happening. What did he say? He smiled, that's all, nothing happened. Dear Guna Sekhra, thank you for smiling, thank you for your comments, thank you, thank you for your presence on Newsline Live. Thank you. And that's the way it was on Newsline this evening. It's now time for the primetime news from that wonderful team, uh, Team News First. Take care, and as always, God bless you.